Hey, what's up, guys? Jake here, getting back some Doki Doki Literature Club. We're going back, and we're doing a Natsuki-only run, so buckle up your seatbelts, because shit's about to get real. Ugh! I hear Natsuki utter an exasperated sigh from within the closet. She seems to be annoyed by something. I approach her in case she needs a hand. Uh, you looking for something in there? Freaking Monica! She never puts my stuff back in the right spot. What's the point in keeping your collection organized if someone else is just gonna mess it up? Natsuki slides a bunch of stack books and boxes across the shelf. Manga. You read manga, right? Um, uh, sometimes. Manga's one of those things where you can't really admit you're into it until you figure out where the other person stands. How'd you know, anyway? I heard you bring it up at some point. Besides, it's kind of written on your face. What's that supposed to mean? Uh, I see. There's a long volume of manga amidst a sack of various books on the side of one of the shelves. Curious, I pull it out of the stack. There it is! Natsuki snatches it out of my hand. Then she turns to a box of manga and slips the volume right in the middle of the rest. Ah, much better. Seeing a box set with one book missing is probably the most irritating sight in the whole world. Ah, uh, dude, I know that feel. I get a closer look at the box set she's admiring. Parfait Girls? It's a series I've never heard of in my life. That probably means it's either way out of my demographic, or it's simply terrible. Hey, it could be both. If you're gonna judge it, you can do it through the glass on that door. She points to the classroom door. Hey, hey, I wasn't judging or anything. I love Parfait, and I love girls. So, marrying the two just seems great. I didn't even say anything. It was the tone of your voice. But I'll tell you one thing, buck boy. Consider this a lesson straight from the literature club. Don't judge a book by its cover. Write that one down, guys. That's going to be relevant in this game. In fact, Natsuki pulls out the first volume of Parfait Girls from the box. I'm going to show you exactly why. She shoves the book right into my hands. Ah. Oh. I stare at the cover. It features four girls in colorful attire striking animated feminine poses. It's exceedingly moe. Don't just stand there. Ugh. Natsuki grabs my arm and pulls me out of the closet. Symbolism. She then takes a seat against the wall beneath the windowsills. She pats on the ground next to her, signaling me to sit there. This isn't the windowsill. Wouldn't the chairs be more comfortable? I take my seat. Chairs wouldn't work. We can't read at the same time like that. Uh, why is that? Ah, I, I guess it's easier to sit closer like this. Ah, d don't just say that. You'll make me feel weird about it. Natsuki crosses her arms and scooches an inch away from me. Uh, sorry. I didn't exactly expect to be sitting this close to her either. Not that I can say it's a particularly bad thing. I open the book. It's only a few seconds before Natsuki once again inches closer, reclaiming the additional space while she hopes I won't notice. I can feel her peering over my shoulder, much more eager to begin reading than I am. Wow, how long has it been since I read the beginning? Huh? You don't go back and flip through the older volumes every now and then? Not really. Maybe sometimes after I've already finished the series? Hey, are you even paying attention? Uh, I am, but nothing's really happened yet, so I can talk at the same time. Looks like it's about a bunch of friends in high school. Wow, how original. Typical slice-of-life affair. I kind of grew out of these, since it's rare for the writing to be entertaining enough to make up for the lack of plot. So, what should I expect from this? Parfaits, girls, slice-of-life is going to be good. Is there going to be plot? Well, obviously. You think I would enjoy something that didn't have a plot? I mean, well, I guess I know what you're saying. A lot of the beginning's about simple things. Like, there's a really funny chapter where they're obsessed with a guy at the ice cream shop, but that just helps you get to know the characters. And besides, it's still entertaining. But later on, there's all kinds of drama. Like when they all get in their backstories, and when some of the romance starts to happen. That's really what makes it good. And there's so many touching parts. Oh, it, is that so? It sounds like you really know what you're talking about. Maybe I underestimated you. <laughs> hey, wait! What's that supposed to mean? Uh, Natsuki gives me a little shove. I just meant I haven't seen you at your full power. Huh, good save. Ah, this chapter seems like it's about baking. This is just a guess, but um, is there a lot of baking in this manga? Well, Natsuki pauses for a moment as if she doesn't want to admit something. Yeah? Why does that matter? It doesn't, I was just curious. Since you enjoy baking too, right? And I'm sure that has nothing to do with the series, right? That's... That's just a coincidence. I just happened to get into baking around the same time I got into this manga. Like I would ever do anything because it's in a manga. I feel bad for anyone that impressionable. <laughs> Definitely not a coincidence, though. I guess that explains Natsuki's interest in baking. 
Still, of all the hobbies to pick up from a manga, that's definitely one of the better ones. Not to mention, she's really good at it, so who am I to judge? No one. Um, we read on for a few more minutes. I've finished a couple chapters at this point. Um, are you sure this isn't boring for you? It's not! Even though you're just watching me read? Well, I'm, I'm fine with that. I, if you say so, my dude. I guess it's fun sharing something you like with someone else. I always get excited when I convince any of my friends to pick up a series I enjoy. You know what I mean? <sighs> huh? You don't? Um, that's not... Well, I wouldn't really know. What do you mean? It means she doesn't know. Don't you share your manga with your friends? Could you not rub it in? Oh, jeez, sorry. <sighs> like I could ever get my friends to read this. They just think manga's for kids. You are kids. You're in high school, my dude. I can't even bring it up without them being all like, Eh? You still haven't grown out of that yet? Makes me want to punch them in the face. Ugh, I, dude, I know those kind of people. Honestly, it takes a lot of effort to find friends who don't judge, much less friends who are into it. I'm already kind of a loser, so I guess I gravitated towards the other losers over time. But it's probably harder for someone like you. Hmm. Yeah, that's probably accurate. Hey, fuck you too, dude. Wait, which part? I mean, I feel like I can't even keep it in my own room. I don't even know what my dad would do if he found this. At least it's safe here in the club room. Except Monica was kind of a jerk about it. Ugh, I just can't win, can I? Well, it paid off in the end, didn't it? I mean, here I am, reading it. Well, it's not like that solves any of my problems. Eh, maybe. But at least you're enjoying yourself, right? Ugh. Ugh. So? <laughs> Jeez, that's enough! Are you gonna keep reading or what? Yeah, yeah. I flip the page. Suddenly, Natsuki starts laughing. <laughs> I totally forgot that happens. Natsuki puts her finger on one of the panels. Minori is my favorite character. You always feel a little bad for her since she's so unlucky. But it gets especially bad when... Uh... I shouldn't be talking about that yet. Just finish this chapter! Natsuki's voice sparkles with excitement. It's in stark contrast to her usual bossy tone. But if she's not used to sharing her favorite manga with her friends, I can understand why. It's hard to express in words the feeling you get when connecting with someone like that. Being able to provide that to Natsuki, for whom it's a rare experience, the thought makes me smile a little to myself. The thought makes me smile a little to myself. Okay, everyone! Huh? Are you all ready with today's poems? Um... Oh, come on! Could your timing be any worse? Sorry! I just need to make sure we have enough time! Though you do look pretty cozy over there! <laughs> ah! Ah! Natsuki suddenly notices how close she's gotten to me. She hastily slides herself a good 12 inches away from me, or one foot. Alright. Guess I'll stop here for now. I close the book and hand towards Natsuki. You're just giving it back? I mean, it's not mine, right? Don't you want to know what happens? I mean, no, but... Monica just said... Don't be dumb! Just take it home with you! Huh? I is that really alright? I said it mostly because I really didn't plan on using my spare time to read this piece of trash. Well, of course! It would take forever to finish if you didn't take it home. Just finish that one before tomorrow so we can start the next one. And if it gets bent, I'll fucking kill you. By tomorrow? I only got partway through the volume so far. I might fall behind on some shows if I try to get through this. Oh no, not your shows. But I suppose that's a necessary sacrifice in exchange for seeing Natsuki's enthusiastic face. Or am I more scared of what will happen if I don't finish it? I mean, she did say she'd fucking kill me. Alright then. I stand up. I return to where I put my stuff and carefully slip the book back into my bag. By the way, did you remember to write a poem last night? Y yeah uh huh totally, yes! My relaxation ends. I can't believe I agreed to do something so embarrassing. I couldn't really find much inspiration since I've never really done this before. Well, now that everyone's ready, why don't you find someone to share with? I can't wait! Sayori and Monica enthusiastically pull out their poems. Sayori's is on a wrinkled sheet of loose leaf from a spiral notebook. On the other hand, Monica wrote hers in a composition notebook. I can already see Monica's pristine handwriting from where I sit. Natsuki and Yuri reluctantly comply as well, reaching into their bags. I do the same myself. Alright, let's see what she's got for us today. I told Natsuki I was interested in her poems yesterday. It's probably only fair if I share mine with hers first. 
Huh? Okay, well, let's start with the things I don't like. First of all, um, it's fucking terrible. Natsuki rereads my poem. <laughs> Never mind, I don't even feel like giving you my opinion. Oh, what the, what's even the point of sharing in the first place, then? I wrote this when I could have been doing other things, like jacking it. Ugh. In, in fact, remember how I said I wanted to read your poems? That's what I had in mind when writing this. I want to help you feel comfortable enough to share yours, like Monica said. Ugh! Well, I would be a lot more comfortable sharing my poem if yours was really bad. You were supposed to show me some dumb poem and make me go, Heh, well it's not that great, but let me show you what real literature looks like. And you went, and you ruined it. I hope you're happy. Um... So, in other words, you're saying you liked it? Ugh. Natsuki's retort gets caught in her throat. Ugh, you're so... You just... You just don't understand anything, do you? I already told you, you don't have to go announcing it to the world like you're all self-important. Pretty sure you never actually said that. I said that mostly to myself. Natsuki must really hate me or something. I can't figure out if it's a win or a loss that she likes my poem. In any case, you still need to show me yours, right? Ugh, fine, I guess. Only because Monica will make me if I don't. Eagles can fly. Monkeys can climb. Crickets can leap. Horses can race. Owls can seek. Cheetahs can run. Eagles can fly. People can try. But that's about it. Awesome. Yeah, I told you you weren't gonna like it. Fuck you, I like it. What? Just be honest. I am. Why are you so convinced I wouldn't like it? Well, because everyone in high school thinks writing has to be all sophisticated and stuff. So people don't even take my writing seriously. But isn't the point of poems for people to express themselves? Your writing style wouldn't make your message any less valid. Yes, exactly! I like when it's easy to read, but it hits you hard. Like in this poem, seeing everyone around you do great things can be really disheartening. So I decided to write about it. Yeah, no, I understand. But the other nice thing about simple writing is it puts more weight on the wordplay. Like, I set it up for a rhyme at the end, but then made it fall flat on purpose. It helps bring out the feeling in the last line. So, you did, yes. I guess more went into it than I realized. That's what it means to be a pro. I'm glad you learned something, write that down. Didn't expect that from the youngest one here, did you? Yeah, I guess not. I decided to humor her with that last comment. I don't really care how old everyone is, but if Natsuki's feeling proud, I won't take that away from her. <sighs> it's not long before Natsuki comes up to me expectantly. Yeah, yeah. Don't worry, I kept my promise. I pull the first volume of Parfait Girls out of my bag. Natsuki takes from my hands, then quickly turns it over, presumably to check for wrinkles. Hey, yo, I'm not that careless. I handle manga all the time, you know. I just wanted to make sure. Can you blame me for being paranoid? I don't give people my manga every day, you know. I mean, that's true. I don't blame you. Well, anyway, let me put this one back. I'm gonna get the next one, okay? Natsuki makes her way out of the closet. I follow. So you're gonna tell me everything you thought, right? Where did this volume leave off again? I forget. Uh, um, the chapter ended when Minori and Alice found... MONICA! Natsuki's voice resonates from inside the closet. Huh? I peer inside. All of Natsuki's books are lined up on the top shelf. Did you move my manga again? Uh, sorry, sorry! The teacher got mad at me for taking up so much space in her closet! So I had to move some stuff around and clean up a little bit. It's all still there, I just had to organize it a bit. Ugh. The top shelf is far above Natsuki's head. She makes a futile hop trying to figure out how to reach her manga. Jeez. This is so inconvenient. I'm moving these all back down. There's plenty of room on these shelves. And besides... They're really pretty to look at when they're all lined up. Why would you waste that on the top shelf? Um, Natsuki. There's a stool on the wall there. In the closet, there's a collapsible stool that's hanging on the wall. If you want, I can reach up there and hand them to you. I can get them myself! Natsuki grabs the stool from the wall and unfolds it. You think I'm too short or something? You just grabbed a stool, my dude. I mean... I knew it! Well, you know what? Just watch me. Natsuki hops onto the stool, which ends up being a little wobbly because of its collapsible design. Uh, uh, careful. I know what I'm doing. Standing on the school, Natsuki's fingertips reach the top shelf. The stool would be enough for me to easily grab the books, but Natsuki's being stubborn as usual. Ugh. 
Uh. Natsuki uses her fingers to scoot one of the smaller boxes to the edge of the shelf. See? Yeah! The box suddenly tips. Natsuki barely catches it before it falls to the floor. The stool wobbles. Ah! Losing balance, Natsuki hops off the stool. Thankfully, she was able to stay on her feet. She holds the box triumphantly. Th there. Having almost fell, Natsuki's a bit shaken up. Jeez. No need to prove yourself to me, dude. There's no way you'll be able to get the bigger boxes like that. I can reach them, so just... I said I can do it! I don't want your help, okay? Ugh. I'm gonna get a chair, so just hang on. Natsuki forced her way past me out of the closet. Just grab him while she's gone, dude. Let's see. The classroom chairs have desks attached, so they're too inconvenient to fit in the closet. Aha! Natsuki trots over to the teacher's desk, which has a computer chair behind it. She rolls it on its wheels back over to the closet. Um, it's a little dangerous since the chair swivels and rolls. But I've already learned my lesson, so I keep my big fat mouth shut. <laughs> Natsuki climbs onto the chair, then slowly balances onto her feet. Since she refuses my help, I take a seat with my back against the side of the doorway and simply watch. Oh, look, she's so happy! Ah, there we go! See, I can easily do it now! Natsuki grabs a stack of manga and bends down to put it on the shelf below. Bad idea. Ah! The, chair, the chair swivels. Natsuki catches herself on the shelf. What are you doing? Can you at least hold the chair steady instead of sitting and doing nothing? Who was it that told me not to help? Yeah, yeah, I got you, I got you, fam. I hold the chair while Natsuki reaches back up. Uh, I can... I can almost see up her skirt? Uh, I force myself to turn away. What a gentleman. Natsuki seriously didn't think this through. Once she realizes, I'll be dead. Hup! Natsuki wraps her arms around the parfait girl set, easily the largest one on the shelf. Ugh, heavy. Hey, fuck boy. I, I don't think I can bend down without falling. Hurry and take this one. Huh? But, uh, but then I have to let go of the chair. That's fine. Just for a second. Hurry up. All right, all right. Just, um, let me just stand up. I slowly release my grip from the chair. What do you mean, stand up? Natsuki looks down at me. Why are you all the way back? Uh, eh? Natsuki looks like she just realized something, but she'll lose her balance if she moves. Natsuki, um, the box. What? What are you looking at? Um, the manga? You're trying to look at my... 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 Manga. Her manga collection, yes. Natsuki's legs shake. I, I'm not. I, I was just... Natsuki, don't try to move. Just give me the box. Y you perv! You set me up! Go away! Get out! But... It's, I'll do it myself! Uh, the chair suddenly swivels beneath Natsuki's feet. Natsuki! Yeah! The scene turns to the chaos in a split second. The chair flies from under Natsuki's feet. Frantically, I try to catch her. The box topples out of her hands and the books go flying. I got you! I do not, in fact, got her. The full force of Natsuki's body against me throws me to the ground. Wow, we are exceptionally weak. She's like 10 pounds. A whole bunch of books pelt me in the face. That's nice. Natsuki tries to shield herself with her own arms as she, her face lands straight on my chest. Uh, my right arm and back seriously felt the impact. Hello, she's very close. Uh, slowly, Natsuki comes to her senses. She presses her arms straight into me to prop herself up. Thanks, that's real nice. Eh? Natsuki seems to realize it's not the floor that's beneath her. Yeah! Gross! Gross! Yeah. A fist pounds into my chest. Thank you! Love that. Natsuki then hoists herself to her feet. What were you thinking? You sicko! Is everything okay over here? I heard a loud noise. Monica suddenly peers in. Monica! Do you see what happens when you put the manga on the top shelf? This is your fault somehow. Are you trying to kill your club members or something? She would never. Perish that thought immediately. Monica's a sweetheart. Jeez. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> oh, and one more thing. It seems like your most recent club member is a total pervert. So I hope you're happy. I didn't... Somehow it's impossible for me to explain this whole bizarre situation to Monica. I didn't do anything, I swear. I know, I know, don't worry. Monica says that quietly to me. Looks like I'm off the hook. Uh, oh no! M my... Huh? I look down. Natsuki's kneeling on the floor, holding one of the books that's scattered all over the floor. There's a large diagonal crease along one of the pages she's desperately trying to smooth out. Oh, it must have landed on the page. 
Natsuki tries a bit more to fix the crease, but she can't get it out. Suddenly, she gives up and slams the book shut, then throws it to the floor. Instead of continuing to yell, she just lowers her head. <laughs> Natsuki, are you... No! Natsuki's voice squeaks. My voice didn't squeak, sorry. I see tears on her face. Uh, I, I'll help you get the crease out, okay? It's partially my fault, so Natsuki shakes her head, still looking down. No! I don't even care that much. I'm just... I'm having a really bad day today. Natsuki sobs again. I didn't mean to take it out on you. I really didn't mean to. It... It's fine. It, is there anything you want to talk about? Natsuki shakes her head. Just... Every day... Is... So hard. I just want to... Come to the club and... Natsuki falls silent again. I can't press her, so I can only do what I know how to do. Alright. Well, I'll help you clean this up. And I'll move the rest of your manga for you. Uh, I pick up volume two of Parfait Girls. We'll set this one aside. This will help cheer you up for a bit, right? We can get started on it once I'm done here. Natsuki looks up with her glossy eyes. Her lip quivers. You're... You're really nice to me. Huh? That sounds really strange coming from Natsuki. I didn't expect it at all. Well, I, I'm just treating you like a friend, you know? <clears throat> Natsuki lowers her head and stifles another sob. I'm not sure what happened to her today, but being nice is the least I can do. The next couple minutes are silent between us as I begin gathering the scattered books. I make sure to slip them into the box in their correct order. After a little bit, Natsuki starts helping. It isn't long before we're done and I hoist the box onto the shelf where Natsuki wanted to put it. Then I get on the stool and quickly finish moving the rest of her books from the top shelf. Alright! That should do it. I hop off the stool. Natsuki averts her gaze. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> it's nothing, dude. Natsuki's holding the volume I set aside in her hands. Alright, I'm ready. Good. Even if you weren't, I'd make you anyway. You're taking responsibility for what you said. The thing about cheering me up. I'm, uh, dude, if you insist. You know what? Fuckboy ain't so bad. We sit in the same spot as last time and I open the second volume. Natsuki's mood quickly improves, laughing and pointing out things to me. She's surprisingly sharp, making note of a lot of subtle repeated jokes and background elements. In the end, I'm pretty impressed by how everything ties together in this manga. I guess Natsuki has good taste after all. Maybe not in men, but whatever. After some time, Monica gets our attention as usual and it's time to share poems again. Uh, I guess I'll be holding on to this for now. Yep. Even you sound more enthusiastic this time. Well, I'm starting to get into it, you know? <laughs> I told you. Yeah, yeah. I returned to my seat and slipped the book into my bag. Alright, Natsuki, enjoy this fucking poem. <sighs> Natsuki reads my poem. She keeps glancing at me, then back at the poem. By now, she must have read it more than once. <clears throat> what? It, is it that bad? No! No, it's not! It's good. It's like, really good, okay? There, I said it. Ugh, this wasn't supposed to happen at all. Why can't you just be bad at this? Sorry? My poems are supposed to impress you, not the other way around. You're trying to impress me? Obviously, you think I'd let you enjoy Yuri's writing more than mine? Give me a break. Well... In that case, what's the problem with me trying to impress you? I'll tell you, you... <laughs> Natsuki's face freezes like she just realized something. D -d -d you fucking... You're trying to impress me? Natsuki vigorously scans her eyes over my poem one more time. Then the poem slips out of her hands and flutters to the floor. I... I have to use the bathroom. Red face Natsuki quickly walks out of the room. My god, my affection has made her violently ill. She's gonna go vomit. Hey, fuckboy! Did you do something to Natsuki? I just saw her rush out like that. You didn't do anything terrible, did you? N no How could anyone in this club do something terrible to another member? I just told her that my voice gets caught in my throat. There's no way I could tell Monica I'm trying to impress Natsuki. Huh? Monica sees the poem lying on the floor and swiftly picks it up. She reads through it, her smile not fading from her face. I see! You wrote this for Natsuki, didn't you? Uh, I mean... Not really? In fact, didn't she like your poem a lot the other day, too? 
I'm surprised you know her taste so well already. Are you sure you're not cheating, fuckboy? Cheating? What do you even mean by that? Uh, never mind, I'm just kidding! <laughs> I didn't understand Monica's joke at all. Eh, anyway! How do you think Natsuki feels about you? Oh, you don't need to answer that. I was just- it was just something for you to think about. H hey! Natsuki comes up and snatches the poem out of Monica's hands. Neither of us had noticed her ran out of the classroom. In our defense, she's very small. Did you read this, Monica? Of course! I really liked it! Ugh. You should really stop reading things that aren't for you, you know. You have a bad habit of doing that. Uh, what? But- but Fuckboy wrote this poem! And we're supposed to share with everyone, right? Ugh. Natsuki freezes. She apparently forgot my poems technically for everyone to read. Okay, well, I think Fuckboy's done sharing this poem with everyone. It's not like anyone would want to read this anyway. In fact, I'm just gonna hold on to this. If you insist. What? Why are you looking at me like that? Like what? Ugh. Never mind. Um, Natsuki. Uh, I'll give you the poem, but that's not very fair to Sayori. She hasn't gotten to read it yet. So what? Who gives a fuck? Well, I guess fuckboy's right, Natsuki. It's really not fair if you don't let everyone else finish reading it. <sighs> Fine. Natsuki returns my poem. It's not like she's gonna like it, though. Anyway, read my poem now. And no, I won't let you keep it. This is my only copy. Amy likes spiders. You know what I heard about Amy? Amy likes spiders. Icky, wriggly, hairy, ugly spiders! That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a cute singing voice. I heard her singing my favorite love song. Every time she sang the chorus, my heart would pound to the rhythm of the words. But she likes spiders? And that's why I'm not friends with her. One time, I hurt my leg really bad. Amy helped me up and took me to the nurse. I try not to let her touch me. She likes spiders, so her hands are probably gross. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a lot of friends. I always see her talking to people. She probably talks about spiders. What if her friends start to like spiders too? That's why I'm not friends with her. It doesn't matter if she has other hobbies. It doesn't matter if she keeps it private. It doesn't matter if it doesn't hurt anyone. It's gross. And she's gross. The world is better off without spider lovers. And I'm gonna tell everyone. What a classic poem about spiders. Not bad, right? It's, uh, it's quite a bit longer than yesterday's. Yesterday's was way too short. I was just warming up. I hope you didn't think that was the best I could do. I mean, no, of course not. Anyway, the message is pretty straightforward in this poem. I doubt I have to explain it. Sometimes you can explain complicated issues with much simpler analogies. And it helps people realize how stupid they're being. Like, anyone ag would agree the subject of this poem is an ignorant jerk. Do you know people like that? Of course. It's about how everyone thinks my... <laughs> you know, that doesn't matter. It can be about anything. I wrote it to be easy to relate to. Everyone has some kind of weird hobby or a guilty pleasure. Something you're afraid if people found out, they'd make fun of you or think less of you. But that just makes people stupid. Who cares what someone likes, as long as they're not hurting anyone and it makes them happy. I think people really need to learn to respect others for liking weird things. Well, you're definitely right about that. At least I can relate to that. And I'm sure a lot of other people can too. You know, I'm glad you can appreciate this kind of writing. I mean, I know I was talking about that yesterday, but I've been, well, I've been enjoying sharing my writing with you, so... So consider yourself lucky, okay? <laughs> well, thanks for being honest, at least. What's that supposed to mean? I'm always honest. Jeez. Just look forward to tomorrow, too, okay? Alright, I will, if, you, if I must. I look up and see Natsuki next to me. Are you just gonna sit there and keep staring at nothing? There isn't that much time, so... Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to make you worry or anything. It, it's not like I'm worried. I was just... Natsuki glances down at her side. She's holding a volume of manga in her hand. Oh, that's right. Something just came up for a minute, but we, we can get started now. I don't want to make you wait any longer. Jeez. Now you're making me feel like a jerk. If something's bothering you, you can just tell me to leave you alone and I will. I mean... Assuming you don't feel like talking about it or anything. She practically mumbles that last part. Nah, I I'm probably making it seem like a bigger deal than it is. Uh, I've just been thinking about Sayori, that's all. S Sayori! Thinking about her? You wanna fuck her, don't you? Yeah, I mean, she's she seems pretty down today. But she didn't want to admit it to me. 
So I can't help but wonder if something happened to her. Oh. Natsuki exhales. Well, first of all, you should really work on your phrasing. But anyway, you're her best friend, right? Uh, yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Then in that case, I think you should trust her a little more. If she needed you, you would be the first person she would go to, right? Well, I, I guess that's true. I mean, some people just have those days. You can't always avoid it. If anything, she probably doesn't want you to worry about her because it's not important. Yeah, that's kind of what she said to me. Maybe it's not right for me to go against her wishes. Exactly. If she needs you to worry about her, it'll be a lot more obvious. Uh, yeah, I should have thought of it that way from the start. Natsuki fiddles with the book she's holding in her hands. She... She really means a lot to you, doesn't she? Um... Don't, don't get the wrong idea or anything. We've, we've just been friends for like a really long time. It's normal to be worried about your friends. I mean, you were worried about me, so... I was not! Gee, if you're fine, then let's hurry and get started already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, everyone! After some time passes, Monica calls out to the club room. Why don't we share our poems now? Before I know it, everything's back to normal. Everyone goes to retrieve their poems, and I do the same. I make eye contact with Monica, and she smiles at me. I don't know what she was talking about with Sayori. It's probably nothing. Let's not worry about it. Let's just share a poem with Natsuki. Yay! Let's see! Let's see! Wow, you're certainly enthusiastic today. Of course! You know I like your writing. I'm just surprised. It seemed like you had a lot of trouble admitting that before. Well, well, of course. I just had to put you in your place a little bit. It's not like... I mean, it's not like I was shy or anything stupid like that. Or jealous. I really wasn't jealous. Well, I mean, fuck, I'm convinced. Just because you happen to be a good writer? That's such a dumb thing to get jealous about. <laughs> Natsuki. What? You're not very confident about your writing, are you? What? What? What are you talking about? My writing is obviously the best. Right? Um, it took me a while to figure out, but I think I finally did. Maybe Natsuki acts so arrogant because she's trying to make up for her own insecurities. If she acts like she's the best, other people might think that way too. Right? Fuck boy. Please, just tell me you like my poems. I don't care if you hate them. Just... Please tell me I'm the best. I just... I just really need to hear that from someone. I know, I sound stupid. But there's a reason I never shared my poems before this. Natsuki? Because... Because nobody ever takes me seriously. What's the point in sharing my poems if people just laugh and say, Oh my god, that's so cute, just like you, Natsuki. Sometimes I don't want to be cute. But nobody understands that. I try really hard when I write. The style doesn't matter. The emotions are there. Why can't anyone see that? I just want... Natsuki trails off. Maybe it's because her lips started to quiver. I look down. Her fists are clenched really tightly. Hey, Natsuki. If you're not careful, you'll rip your own poem. I gently grab the poem with my own hand until she relaxes her grip. I place it flat onto the desk and smooth, it out, smooth out the wrinkles she put into it. D don't read it! Before I can pick it back up, Natsuki snatches the poem from my desk. It's not me good. And I know you hate my poems. So you don't even have to read this one, okay? But dude, I want to read it. What? Why? Because I like your poems. I really do. Why would I judge you for your style? It's not like my own style is anything crazy. I mean, it's true. The first time I read one of your poems, I didn't look much into it. But I know you better now. And it's wrong for Yuri to think your style's more amateur than hers. And Sayori, she always means well, but sometimes she's so focused on simple happiness, she doesn't understand what people really want. Yeah, I guess I never really thought about how hard it is for you. And I'm sorry if I was part of that problem. I understand now. You're not just cute, you're a lot more than that. You're super duper cute. Oh, Natsuki, you're doing it again. Once again, Natsuki clutches her poem a little too hard. She looks down, hiding her eyes from me. I never realized how difficult this was for her. But finally, she forced herself to extend her arms and set her poem on the table. You can... read it. Just turn that way. I don't want you to look... I don't want you to look at my face right now. Okay, okay, I will. 
because you. Tomorrow will be brighter with me around. But when today is dim, I can only look down. My looking is a little more forward, because you look at me. When I want to say something, I say it with a shout. But my truest feelings can never come out. My words are a little less empty, because you listen to me. When something is above me, I reach for the stars. But when I feel small, I don't get very far. My standing's a little bit taller, because you sit with me. I believe in myself with all my heart. But what do I do when it's torn all apart? My faith is a little bit stronger, because you trust in me. My pen always puts my feelings to the test. I'm not a good writer, but my best is my best. My poems are a little bit dearer, because you think of me. Because you, because you, because you. How sweet! Natsuki! Yay! Why are you looking at me like that? If you don't like it, then just say it. I won't... I won't get mad. No, dude, it's not that I don't like it. It was just a little surprising to read. Um, I guess I'm not used to hearing such nice things coming from you. D don't just say that, dummy. What do you think the point of writing even is? Expressing things you can't just say. Yeah, no, I, I understand. I I'm sorry for missing the point sometimes. I always mean well, and I'm happy you showed this to me. I liked it. Well, yeah. I I'm a pro, so... Natsuki mumbles, completely failing to sound confident like she usually does. Just remember that I can think these things sometimes, too. You know, when you're nice to me, it's uh, meaningful. Oh, uh, I'm glad. Sensing Natsuki satisfied, I start to hand the poem back to her. But as I do, Natsuki takes my hands and pushes them back away. Her small, soft hands surprise me with their assertion. I don't want it. What? Why not? I just don't. Jeez. I realize what Natsuki's doing. Unable to be honest, she's trying to give me the poem in a roundabout way. Well, in that case, I'm gonna keep it. Instead of teasing her, I choose to go along with it. Good. If you didn't, I would... <sighs> Never mind. Just, I'm glad that you want it. Natsuki backpedals on her words and leaves it at that. Despite her best efforts to hide her expression, I can see her faintly smiling to herself. That's all for now, so... Go put it away before someone sees it, okay? Oh, um, yeah. I I'll go do that. With that, I return to my seat so I can put away Natsuki's poem. Sud, dude! Oh, hey, what's up, dude? I don't know what I was expecting, but seeing Natsuki in something other than her school uniform totally threw me off. Seeing her in such cute clothes makes the uniform seem totally unfitting in comparison. Jeez, don't make it feel so awkward already! It's gonna be a long afternoon, so don't be weird just because you're not used to seeing me outside of school. Anyway, I'm coming in. Please, by all means. I see you brought a lot of stuff. Did she, though? Natsuki's carrying a large bag that's probably full of baking supplies or instruments of murder. Who knows? Well, I didn't want to come all this way to find out your kitchen isn't equipped for the job. You bought everything I asked you to, right? Yeah, I did. Yesterday, Natsuki asked me to buy a bunch of ingredients if I didn't already have them at home. Good. I'm glad I could count on you to do your part. Well, of course? I'm surprised to hear Natsuki suddenly say that rather than something snarky like she usually does. Could it be that she's a little different outside of school after all? Anyway, let's go to the kitchen. What, you're not even gonna offer to take this heavy bag from me? Where's your hospitality, fuckboy? Oh, come on, dude. Since when did I need to be a gentleman? I grab the bag Natsuki holds out to me. Ugh! This is ridiculously heavy. <laughs> I carried that all the way here, you know. Are you impressed? I see now. Yeah, I am impressed, Natsuki. It seems like I always underestimate you. <laughs> it's because I'm so small, isn't it? You jerk. Natsuki hits a fist into my chest. Okay, ow. Hey, hey. No violence. Your size has nothing to do with it. Do you really hate being small that much? What? Um, it's not like I hate it. I mean, sometimes I like proving people wrong when they only think I'm worth my size. It's fun when I get to be small, but also better than other people. But, geez, never mind. What are you making me say? Don't think you can make me talk about weird shit just because we're not at school. Are we getting started or what? There's a lot of stuff I gotta teach you. <laughs> What? That's a little bit more like you. You're more fun when you just speak your mind like that. H hey! Now you are treating me like a kid. 
I was just trying to be a little nicer to you, you know. And just because I don't have a more mature and sexy figure like Yuri, doesn't mean you should treat me like... Uh, uh, <clears throat> Natsuki catches her words and her face turns bright red. Natsuki? Forget it! I didn't say anything! I should apologize. Eh? I appreciate that you were trying to be nicer. I should have been a little more considerate to that. But also, if that's what you're thinking, you should know there are tons of guys who are into body types like yours. Not me, obviously. I mean, I'm way into the sexy Yuri type, right? But, you know, you're... Someone probably likes you, right? Uh, how would... How would you know that anyway? Just trust me on this one. It's called the internet, hon. Ugh. Gross. Hey, whoa! Was that to me? Who else? Man. Let's just get started already. <laughs> you get all sour when a girl calls you gross. Yeah, fucking imagine that, dude. I finally found your weakness, fuckboy. It's actually- it's kryptonite for your information, but fine. Natsuki smiles deviously. Please spare me. Well, if Natsuki decides to dish out more insults like that, there's no way I'm not fighting back. I'll punch a girl square in the mouth. Don't fucking try me, girl. But she's satisfied enough for now. Finally starting to pull things out of her bag so we can get started. And then baking happens, I guess. Before long, the whole kitchen is a mess. Or maybe we just trash the fucking kitchen. Spoons, dirty bowls, flour, spilled fluid. Hello, that's sus as fuck. And plastic bags are strewn about every countertop. The mixer isn't big enough to make all the batter at once, so we had to do it several times. Wow, Jesus Christ, things are heating up. Meanwhile, Natsuki's babysitting all my movements to make sure I don't mess up her precious baking. Buckboy, where did you put the food coloring? The batter's going in the oven soon, so I need to fill the trays. Uh, I think it's still in the bag next to the table. What are you trying to use it for? To color the batter, of course. I'm making each tray a different color. That way, even if the flavors aren't different, everyone can still pick their favorite. Oh, hey, that's a cute idea. Are we doing anything like that with the icing? Do you want to? Uh, you're asking me? I don't really have a preference, so... Oh, come on! You're not putting any heart into this at all! Can you at least try to have some fun? I, I am having fun. I'm not really sure what Natsuki's trying to get out of me. Meanwhile, I see her separate the batter into smaller bowls and put a few drops of food coloring into each. Oh, hey, that does look pretty cool. See? It's not like baking's just about following instructions. The presentation is where you get to be creative and have the most fun. It's a million times more worth it in the end. It just looking at it makes everyone's eyes light up. Oh, like those ones you made on my first day, huh? I recall Natsuki proudly presenting her cat-shaped cupcakes and Sayori and Monica's delighted expressions. I wonder if I can make Natsuki proud like that, too. Yeah. Maybe I will use the food coloring, then. Sounds like you're starting to understand. Just make sure you completely fill the mixing bowl. Just make sure you completely finish mixing the icing before you mess the food coloring. Yeah, it's getting there. We're using the electric mixer for the batter, so I got stuck with a whisk and a huge bowl for the icing. What? The icing's still all lumpy. Are you even trying? Well, yeah? It'll just take a little longer, dude. Jeez, I'll be here all night if you do it like that. Here, look, let me show you how to beat this thing off. Natsuki grabs the whisk from me and uses her other hand to tilt the bowl back. You really need to just beat the fucking shit out of it. After a few seconds, the consistency of the icing has already improved. See? As if to emphasize, Natsuki sticks a finger in the icing and pops it in her mouth. Okay, that's unsanitary. I reluctantly start to do the same. Please don't. Hey! Natsuki suddenly grabs my wrist. I don't want your gross fingers in my icing. Your icing, huh? Are you forgetting who did all the work? It was her. I start to fight back, trying to inch my finger towards the bowl. Don't make me beat the crap out of you next! Oh, I'd like to see you try, girly. I just push harder, just enough for my finger to reach the icing. I triumphantly scoop some with my finger, just as Natsuki tugs with all her might. Ah! The force of Natsuki pulling me causes me to stumble, making her stumble in turn. Ah! Gross! You got it on my face! If I lick her face, I swear to fucking god. Whose fault is that?! There's a big glob of icing on Natsuki's cheek. Nah. She tries to reach it with her tongue, but it's too far away. Jeez! You know what? Take this! Natsuki instead wipes it off with her finger before shoving her finger towards my own face. Oh, you wish! I'm faster. I grab her wrist with my hand before it reaches my face. Natsuki tries to use the other hand to fight back, but I grab that one as well. Oh, this is aggressively adorable. 
<laughs> oh, stop! Not until you apologize for calling me gross. Fine, fine. I'm sorry for calling you gross. You know I don't mean it. It's just fun seeing you react to it. You do that to me all the time, you know. I have never called you gross. You take that back. Saying dumb things just to get a reaction out of me? Okay, I'll have you know. I'm just dumb. That's just how I speak. I'm sorry. You really shouldn't tease girls like that. Oh, is that so? In that case, I probably shouldn't do this either. I fucking headbutts her. Bam! Full force. I take Natsuki's finger and put it in my mouth, licking off the icing. Okay, here's the problem with that. That's fucking weird and gross, and don't do that. Hello, hi. That's weird. Don't do that. What? what, what? D did you seriously just... Uh, Natsuki is so surprised, she can't even figure out how to get mad at me. Her face is entirely red. Fuck, boy! You really shouldn't do that kind of things to girls. It, unless you really like them. You know that, right? Um... What kind of question is she asking me just like that? Dude, how did the mood turn to this so quickly? Ooh, ooh, pick me! I know how this happened! You put someone else's finger in your fucking mouth, you weirdo, you sex criminal! I- Natsuki gazes at me in silence. I notice her shallow breaths. Why am I starting to feel dizzy? Oh god, she poisoned the icing! Eh? Out of nowhere, the fire alarm starts going off. Oh, I guess you could say things were heating up in here, eh? Huh? Uh, okay, sorry. Natsuki rushes over to the oven. I is something burning? No, the fire alarm's just going off for the fuck of it. I thought you didn't put the cupcakes in yet. <coughs> uh, no wonder. You have the dirty tray in here, you fucking retard. How could you make a mistake like that? Dude, you should have checked that before turning the oven on. Don't blame me for your mistakes. Jeez. Natsuki uses an oven mitt to grab the blackened tray out of the oven. She sets it on top of the stove. In another moment, the fire alarm stops. Anyway, I, I'm i putting them in the oven now. Uh, yeah. The tension from the moment before still lingers over our heads. But the moment's already been lost. I watch as Natsuki slides the cupcake tray into the oven. Then I reluctantly pick up the whisk and continue with the icing like nothing happened. Ah, that smells so good. The cupcakes are ready to be pulled out of the oven. As soon as Natsuki opens the oven door, a blast of sweet-smelling warm air fills the room. Look at how cute they all look. She proudly shows off the different colored cupcakes in each of the trays. Dude, they'll look even better once we add the icing. Not like you need to tell me that. I brought the decorating stuff, so I hope you can get creative. Here, scoop the icing into these bags. Natsuki hands me some plastic bags. I have these nozzles that will make it look nice and fluffy. This one can even make flowers. We probably won't be using it this time, though. What's this one for? I pick up one of the nozzles that has a much thinner tip than the others. Hmm, I fucking wonder. That one's really thin, so you can use it to make stripes or other patterns. Obviously, what the fuck else would you use a thin one for? But you can also use it to write stuff on a cake. Like, happy birthday, or whatever. Huh, I see. That gives me an idea, actually. Eh? Well, it's a literature event, right? We can make it more literature-themed by writing a different word on each of the cupcakes. That's the dumbest idea I've ever fucking heard. It would be fun to see people choose their cupcake based on a word they like. Uh... Hmm? I was kind of expecting you to say something really stupid, so way to go, you met my expectation perfectly. But that's actually... a really cute idea, so... Hehe, <laughs> gotcha! Maybe I'm getting it from you. What? What's that supposed to mean? I'm not cute! Oh, come on, dude. We're not at school. Nobody's judging. You're allowed to be cute. You can't dress and act like this and not expect me to think you're cute. What? Well... Natsuki's voice trails off. Same with you. You think I'm cute? Hello? No. What? Did you say something? N no Nothing! Let's just do the icing! Natsuki picks up the pace and fastens a novel onto each of the bags. There's a lot to do, so we shouldn't be wasting time. Here, I'll show you how to do it. Without giving me a chance to think about before, Natsuki quickly moves on. She shows me how to apply the icing, and then we each get to work. When we're finally finished, Natsuki pulls them all side by side to admire our work. Look at how pretty they all are together. Yeah, they are, aren't they? Ugh, I wish I could have one now. Well, there's no reason you can't, right? I don't see any harm in it. Well, yeah, but... My dad's making dinner tonight, so I really need to save my appetite. Oh. 
Sayori is the exact opposite in that regard. If she was here, she'd probably we'd be down 10 cupcakes already. And she'd still eat dinner. Oh, come on. That's just unhealthy. Besides, when my dad cooks, I need to eat as much of it as I can. Well, anyway. I was hoping we'd have time for manga, but I need to be home for dinner. Oh, dude, already? That's a shame. It's your fault for working so slowly. You should have thought about that. It's not like you'll always have this chance. Man. As usual, Natsuki places the blame on me. You can bring the cupcakes tomorrow, right? If you and Sayori each carry some, you can probably do it in one trip. Yeah, yeah, I can do that. And don't worry, I won't let her eat any. <laughs> I wish she would listen to me the way she listens to you. Ugh. Yeah. I again think back to the conversation I had with Sayori or earlier today. I felt so helpless. Hey, so did she. Sayori always does listen to me, but at that point it felt like she couldn't listen to me at all. Okay, I'm all packed up. Good work today. Hey, you too. I'll walk you out, I guess. What do you mean you guess? Just fucking do it. Just like that, Natsuki's already about to leave. It feels like the afternoon went by in a flash. More than that. Did I even take the opportunity to get close to her like I wanted? I don't know, you fucking put one of her fingers in your mouth, so that's at least something. Well, I, I guess I'll be off then. Thanks for all the help and everything. I'll see you tomorrow. Wait, Natsuki? Eh? Huh? What you said before, about not always having this chance? It doesn't have to be that way at all. I had fun today. You showed me how fun baking can be, like you wanted. But, I mean, aside from that, you can come over any time, okay? I am down to fuck, dude. I think that if possible, uh, I'd like to spend more time like this. If you want to read manga or go out somewhere or put more fingers in my mouth, I'm totally open to that possibility. Um, do, do you really mean that? Natsuki looks at me tensely like she's trying to hide her expression. Yeah, sure, fuck it. I want to spend more time with you. Fuck, boy. I thought you only cared about getting this done. Uh, I, I'm sorry I had to leave so early today. I really didn't want to. I would really... I would stay here longer if I could. I feel the same way as you, so... Natsuki suddenly gets close to me. A lot closer. Wait, N Natsuki. Standing inches from me, Natsuki looks up at me. I feel her fingers gently clutch at the sides of my shirt, as if holding on to me. Her rose-colored cheeks and matching eyes fill my vision, along with her slightly parted lips. What is happening? We about to fuck, dude. Get ready. My head starts to go dizzy as I feel her soft breaths against me. I felt it. For a while now. <coughs> Natsuki suddenly jumps back. S sayori What? Ah! Uh, hi, hi, fuck boy! Sayori! Fucking, you cock block! Get out of here! Just now, we weren't... This... Uh, this isn't what it looks like. <laughs> it's okay, fuckboy. I just stopped by to say hi. Um, uh, well, you should have come a bit earlier. I'm already on my way out, so... Oh, really? That's too bad. Yeah, well, um... I'll still see you at the festival tomorrow, so it's fine. Just don't eat any cupcakes before then. Anyway, later... Clearly flustered, Natsuki hurries off and Sayori waves goodbye. Ah! I hear Natsuki on her exasperated sigh from within the closet. She seems to be annoyed by something. I approach her in case she needs a hand. You looking for something in there? Fucking Monica! She never puts my stuff back in the right spot. What's the point in keeping your collection organized if someone else is just gonna mess it up? Natsuki slides a bunch of stacked books and boxes across the shelf. Manga. You read manga, right? Um, sometimes. Manga's one of those things where you can't admit you're really into it until you figure out where the other person stands. How'd you know, anyway? I heard you bring it up at some point. Besides, it's kind of written on your face. What's that supposed to mean? I... I see. There's a lone volume of manga amidst a sack of various books on the... on the... the uh, fucking... There's a lone volume of manga amidst a sack of various books on the side of one of the shelves. Curious, I pull it out of the stack. There it is! Natsuki snatches it out of my hand. She then turns to a box of manga and slips the volume right into the middle of the rest. Ah, much better. Seeing a box set with one book missing is probably the most irritating sight in the world. I know that feel. I get a closer look at the box set she's admiring. Parfait Girls? It's a series I've never heard of in my life. 
That probably means it's either way out of my demographic, or it's simply terrible. If you're gonna judge, you can do it through the glass on that door. She points to the classroom door. Hey, hey, whoa, I wasn't judging or anything. I didn't even say anything. It was the tone of your voice. But I'll tell you one thing, fuck boy. Consider this a lesson straight from the- I don't die! Okay, it got weird. In fact, Natsuki pulls the first volume of Parfait Girls from the box. I'm gonna show you exactly why. She shoves the book right into my hands. Oh, I stare at the cover. It features four girls in colorful attire striking animated feminine poses. It's exceedingly moe. Don't just stand there. Ah! Natsuki grabs my arm and pulls me out of the closet. She then takes a seat against the wall beneath the windowsills. She pats with the ground next to her, signaling me to sit there. Wouldn't chairs be more comfortable? I take my seat. Chairs wouldn't work. We can't read at the same time like that. Uh, why is that? Oh, I, I guess it's easier to be close together like this. Ah! Don't just say that. You'll make me feel weird about it. Natsuki crosses her arm and scooches an inch away from me. S sorry. I didn't exactly expect to be sitting close to her either. Not that I can say it's a particularly bad thing. I open the book. It's only a few seconds before Natsuki once again inches closer, reclaiming the additional space while she hopes I won't notice. I can feel her peering over my shoulder, much more eager to begin reading than I am. Wow, how long has it been since I read the beginning? Huh? You don't go back and flip through the older volumes every now and then? Not really. Maybe sometimes after I've already finished the series. Hey, are you paying attention? Uh... I am, but nothing's really happened yet, so I can talk at the same time. It looks like it's about a bunch of friends in high school. Typical slice of life affair. I kind of grew out of these since it's rare for the writing to be entertaining enough to make up for the lack of plot. Are you sure this isn't boring for you? It's not! Even though you're just watching me read. Well, I, I'm fine with that. If you say so. I guess it's... I guess it's fun to share something you like with someone else. I always get excited when I convince any of my friends to pick up a series I enjoy. You know what I mean? Uh, hmm? You don't? Um, that's not... Well, I wouldn't really know. What do you mean? Don't you share your manga with your friends? Could you not rub it in? Jeez. Oh, sorry. <sighs> like I could ever get my friends to read this. They just think manga's for kids. I can't even bring it up with them being all like, Eh? You still haven't grown out of that yet? Makes me want to punch them in the face. Ugh. I know those kinds of people. Honestly, it takes a lot of effort to find friends who don't judge, much less friends who are also into it. I'm already kind of a loser, so I guess I gravitate towards the other losers over time. But it's probably harder for someone like you. Hmm. Yeah, that's pretty accurate. Wait, which part? I mean, I feel like I can't even keep it in my own room. My dad would beat the shit out of me if he found this. At least it's safe here in the club room. Set Monica's kind of a jerk about it. Ugh, I just can't win, can I? Well, it paid off in the end, didn't it? I mean, here I am, reading it. Well, it's not like that solves any of my problems. Maybe. But at least you're enjoying yourself, right? Uh, uh, so? Ha ha ha. Jeez, that's enough. Are you gonna keep reading or what? Yeah, yeah. I flipped the page. Okay, I guess we fell asleep for a little bit. This is fine. Time passes. Natsuki's strangely quiet now. I glance over at her. It looks like she started to fall asleep. Hey, Natsuki. Y yeah? Suddenly, Natsuki collapses straight into me. H hey, okay. She's fine. Look, she's just really good. She's doing fine. Oh, oh, jeez. Natsuki, are you okay? Yeah, she's fine. She always does that. See? Look how fine she is. Here? Monica reaches into her bag and pulls out some kind of protein bar. She throws it in Natsuki's direction. Natsuki's eyes suddenly light up again. She snatches the bar from the floor and immediately tears off the wrapper. I told you not to give him f She doesn't even finish her sentence before stuffing it into her mouth. <laughs> Don't worry, fuckboy. She's fine. It just happens every now and then. That's why I always keep a snack in my bag for her. Anyway, why don't we all share poems now? Alright, let's share a poem with Natsuki. Hmm. Well, it's not terrible, but it's pretty disappointing after your last one. Then again, if this was as good as your last one, I'd be completely pissed. Well, I guess I wanted to try something a little different this time. Fair enough. You're still new to this, so I wouldn't expect you to find your style right away. I mean, everyone in the club writes really different from each other. Maybe you'll find a little influence from all of us. For instance, 
I noticed you were spending some time with Yuri today. Not that I care who you spend your time with. After all, I was taught never to expect anything from anyone. So it's not like I was waiting for you or anything. Still, you should at least look over my poem. You'll probably be able to learn something from it. This is garbage. This is literal nonsense. This ought to make it a little easier to read. Open your third eye. I can feel the tenderness of her skin through the knife, as if it were an extension of my sense of touch. My body nearly convulses. There's something incredibly faint deep down that screams to resist this uncontrollable pleasure, but I can already tell I'm being pushed over the edge. I can't... I can't stop myself. So yeah, that's cool. That's pretty neat, right? It's a good poem. I like the part with the knife. Fuck boy! Why didn't you come read with me today? I was waiting for you. I was waiting for a long time. It was the only thing I had to look forward to today. Why did you ruin it? Why did you like Yuri more? I think you're better off not associating with her. Are you listening to me? Yuri is a sick freak. That should be obvious by now. So just play with me instead. Okay? You don't hate me, fuckboy, do you? Okay. Do you hate me? Do you want me to go home crying? The club is the only place I feel safe. Don't ruin that for me. Don't ruin it. She looks good. Please. Just stop talking to Yuri. Play with me instead. It's all I have. Play with me. Play with me! Okay. Fun. Yay. <laughs> this one's alright. Alright? Well, yeah. About as good as yesterday's anyway. I still can't really tell how much you actually care about writing, but either way, you're doing alright. Even though you're not really spending time with anyone but Yuri, I still think it's nice to have activities that we all participate in, so you better keep working hard. I mean, I know I'm not president or vice president or anything, but that doesn't mean you can let me down, okay? So at least read mine too for now. But just to be clear, this poem means a lot to me, so read it carefully, okay? I don't know how else to bring this up, but there's something I've been worried about. Yuri's been acting kind of strange lately. You've only been here a few days, so you may not know what I mean, but she's not normally like this. She's always been quiet and polite and attentive, things like that. Okay, so this is really embarrassing, but I'm forcing myself to suck it up. The truth is, I'm really worried about her, but if I try talking to her, she'll just get mad at me again. I don't know what to do. I think you're the only person she'll listen to. I don't know why, but please try to do something. Maybe you convince her to talk to a therapist. I've always wanted to try being better friends with Yuri, and it really hurts me to see this happening. I know I'm going to hate myself later for admitting that, but right now I don't care. I just feel so helpless, so please, see if you can do something to help. I don't want anything bad to happen to her. I'll make you cupcakes if I have to. Just please try to do something. As for Monica, I don't know why, but she's been really dismissive about this. It's like she just wants us to ignore it. So I'm mad at her right now, and that's why I'm coming to you about this. Don't let her know I wrote this. Just pretend like I gave you a really good poem, okay? I'm counting on you. Thanks for reading. Oh, well, mm, hello? Are we cool? Oh, I changed my mind. Ignore everything you just read. There's no point in trying to do anything. It's Yuri's own fault that she's so unlikable. Can you hear me, fuckboy? If you would just spend more time with Monica, all these problems would go away. Yuri and I are too messed up for someone as wonderful as you. Just think of Monica from now on. Just Monica. Just Monica. Just Monica. Okay. Yep. Well, yeah, mm-hmm. That sounds good to me. Cool! Neat!